Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 48 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to do something really cool. Today, we're going to make a paint application using Java. And we're going to be able to come in here and change the different colors for any of these rectangles that we draw. And eventually, we're going to get into brushes and lines and ellipses and all this other cool stuff. So let's get into the code. All right, so I'm just going to jump right into it because I got a lot to do here. And all of the code here and pictures and everything else is available in a link underneath of the video. So go get it and play around with this because this is a fun project for once. So I'm just getting swing in here because, of course, I need swing. And I'm also going to get my events because I'm going to be handling a lot of events. I'm going to be doing a lot of things that I've gone over in the past parts of the tutorial. Of course, going to need Java Aunt. And we're also going to be needing Java Aunt Geometry because we're going to be drawing shapes and also we're going to be revisiting array lists because I've had a lot of questions about that and of course I'm going to need the utility library if I want to handle that guy so public class Java lesson 48 and then I'm going to extend the J frame just like I did in the last part of the tutorial and I'm covering countless numbers of things that I've done in past tutorials so this should be a fun one so I'm going to have a brush button I'm going to have a line button and a lips button rectangle button that's all the things that you saw at the bottom of the screen there i'm not going to bounce back and forth between that and this because if you want to see that thing just go download it play with it then i'm going to create an integer and it's going to help me monitor which type of shape that i'm going to be drawing and i'm just going to give it the default value of one at this point and then i'm going to come in here and go and define my default stroke colors and to define the color just call color and black just like we did in the last tutorial if you didn't see that you might want to watch it because i go over all this shape stuff but it's nowhere near as exciting as this tutorial some default and everything is black and of course everything has to be in uppercase letters here and there you go and then i'm going to come in here public static void main string just like we did 100 times and create a new lesson 48 object here now we'll do some fun stuff okay so public this is java lesson 48 in here create my constructor then i'm going to define all my defaults for my j frame so i'm going to set my size equal to 500 by 500 this can be anything you want it to be set my default title and you could make this into a full-blown paint application I mean, i'm going to show you pretty much everything you need to know to do it and go out there and make the next photoshop i'll close operation j frame exit on close that's just going to close everything after i'm done with the application then i'm going to create my j panel and this is going to be the button panel. I'm going to hold all those buttons you saw on the bottom of the screen. And then I'm going to create a box or a box layout, which I've covered in past swing tutorials. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. I've pretty much covered everything in one tutorial or another, so I'm more than happy to do that. And that's just going to create a horizontal box so I can lay all my buttons into it. And then I have to go and get all my buttons. Let's just scroll up here and save myself a ton of time. Paste that there. And I'm going to be calling a method method that I'm going to be making here in a second. So it's going to be called make me buttons. And all I need to do to make a button is pass the name for the image file. And then one is going to represent the type of shape that's going to be drawn. And one is going to be based off of current action. So that's how I'm going to be monitoring all that stuff. And I'm going to need four of those. And this is going to be line button. This is going to be ellipse button. And this is going to be rectangle butt, which you already saw what that does. And then I just need to change these image files. And these are the icons that are going to show up on top of the button. That's it. Nothing that fancy. Well, I guess it is kind of fancy because I've never done it before, but that's how it works. If you ever wondered how to put an image on top of a button in swing, now you're going to know. And there we are. So there's all those guys. Well, then I'm going to have another different type of button method. Again, I'm going to make these in a second. These are customized methods. This isn't something that's built into Java to create buttons like this okay so one's going to be the stroke button and the other one's going to be the fill button and then i change this to make me color button which isn't the best english on earth but that's okay and then the ping file this is associated with is called stroke and this one's going to be called fill and then in this situation this isn't even going to matter but i'm just going to throw five and six inside of there and then the way i'm going to have this built is if I want a stroke defined, I'm going to set this for true. And if I want it to be a fill, I'm going to set this as false. So those are just Boolean values I'm going to be passing over there. All right, more on those guys here in a minute because I still got other work to do. Now, after those buttons have been created, I need to add them to my box that's going to be put in a panel and then thrown on the frame. And so I got to go brush butt right like that. There's going to be six of these guys. 
There you go. And one of you guys actually asked me to do this tutorial, so thank you for that. But you didn't want your name out there. Thank you either way, because it's fun to do tutorials like this. So if you have an idea for a fun tutorial, leave it below, because I like doing fun tutorials. So there you are, just added all our buttons to the box. Now I'm going to go button, panel, and add the box with all the buttons into my panel that's going to be going into a J-frame. Then I have to define exactly how I'm going to have this set up because I'm going to use a border layout. So I just need to go button, panel, like that. And then I need to say where I want it to be located at. And I want it to be in the south. As you saw, it's in the bottom of the screen. And that's a border layout inside a swing. And then I'm going to have another one. And this is going to be my drawing area. And I'm going to be creating that in a second. So this is going to be drawing board, which is a method I'm going to call down below. And then here I'm going to say center which means it's basically going to take up the rest of the screen. There you go. And then the final thing is to say, hey, frame, get visible. And there you are, and you go true, and there we go. So now it's time to go and create all these other methods that I've been referring to. So the first one I'm going to make is make me buttons. This guy right here. Copy that, throw that there. And it's going to be public. J button is what it's going to be spitting out after it's all done. And then this thing right here is going to be a string, because that's going to be the location for the icon. And this guy right here is going to be an integer that is going to refer to whichever type of shape is going to be drawn whenever this guy is clicked on. And the reason why this is final is because any local variable that's used inside of an inner class but is not declared inside of that inner class must be marked as final. Okay, so that's just a rule to remember. I'm going to be doing design pattern and object oriented programming tutorials here real soon and we'll get more into that stuff then. So just remember at this point that's what you got to do. So then I'm going to create like a temporary holding cell for our new button and then I need to define an icon object and it's going to be image icon and then icon file. So the location for my soon to be icon for this button. And then I'm going to go the butt and set the icon equal to butt icon. And then I'm going to add an event listener to this so that whenever my button is clicked on, uh, somebody is able to handle that and do something with it. And I'm just going to build this guy directly inside of here because it's easy to do it that way. And I'm going to go public. And this is why we need final because I'm doing all this shenanigans that you see on the screen. But I like to keep everything all nice in order here. So, so event and then current action. Again, this is just going to say what type of shape is going to be created. And this is going to be action number, the number that was passed over there. And all this is all defined for me. Just got to put a semicolon there to close this area off. This is what I'm closing off right there. See, there's a closing curly brace and that curling brace right there. And that closing brace right there for that function. And then after this, just go return the button that was just created with all those cool little things and we're all happy. Now on this guy up here, I need to add this to the button, of course. File save. Awesome. Okay, now we're pretty much going to be doing the same exact thing here in a second. Remember, the this one's going to handle all the shape buttons and then the next thing I'm going to be creating here is going to handle the stroke and the fill button. Buttons. They're going to be a little bit different. Still going to be buttons, just going to be a little bit different. And this is going to be make me color button. Technically, I'm not going to need this, but I'm going to leave it in here just for the heck of it. And I'm going to go final, boolean, and then I'm going to say, is this a stroke or not? Okay, that's what the boolean is, because it's going to act different depending upon if it is a stroke. And then all this stuff's going to be the same, except this is just going to be completely disregarded. Just get rid of that. And I'm going to say, if it is a stroke, then I'm going to use the J color chooser, which is going to be a pop-up that you saw earlier. It's going to pop on the screen and allow them to define what the stroke color is. So equal to J color chooser. And then you just go show dialog. And then I'm just going to say null. Then you define the message that you want to show on the screen. I'm going to say pick a stroke and then you have to define the default color that's going to be used inside of it and I'm going to leave that as black. So that's the default whenever the chooser pops up. And I'm going to copy that, type in else, paste that in there and change this to fill color. That's going to handle the fill. This is going to be pick fill and let everything else here be exactly the same. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm going to bounce up here and change this to stroke color to had it set a stroke before. All right, so that's going to make all that wonderful. Okay, good. Next thing I got to do is create my little drawing area and I'm going to call this drawing board and it's going to extend J component just like we did in the last part of the tutorial. And then I'm going to create an array list for both each of the shapes that I create, which is going to be a shape object. I'm going to call it shapes is equal to new array list. And what's so great about this is I'm going to be able to save these array lists out to a file. I mean, it's really cool stuff. And then I got to do the same thing for the fill and the color. So copy that. And then these are just going to be colors. There they are, array list for colors. 
And instead of shapes, this is going to be shape fill, and this is going to be shape stroke. And we're going to be able to save all those things and then pop through them and repaint them on the screen. It's going to be really cool. And then also, I'm going to create a point, which is just going to hold an XY position for the starting area where they click and then move on from there. And then we're going to go public drawing board create this guy then we're going to start adding listeners here vent listeners so this is going to be a mouse listener I'm just going to track what the user's doing on the screen so that we'll be able to rack to it start drawing stuff mouse adapter then i'm going to define these methods inside of here as well so public void and then we're going to say okay what are we going to do when the user presses the mouse and then we're going to figure that out so it's a mouse event e roll this up and then we're going to go, okay, well, what was the position of the mouse whenever the mouse was first pressed? We want to get that information. You just go E dot get X. And then we want to go E dot get Y. And that's going to get us the X and Y position for the mouse whenever it was first pressed. Draw end is going to be equal to draw start which is going to handle drawing like a dot on a screen. And then we're going to repaint the screen afterwards. Bounce down inside of here. Now we're going to go and figure out what we're going to do whenever the mouse is released. Because if we want to draw a square or something on the screen, we got to figure out both where the mouse was clicked and, and where the position of the mouse was whenever it was released. And we're going to create our shape here. And I'm just going to call it A shape. I'm going to call draw rectangle, which I'm going to create in the bottom here after I get all this done. And I need to pass over what was the starting X position when I first clicked on the mouse and the starting Y position. And then I'm going to go E dot get X, which is going to give me the position when the mouse was released. And then E dot get Y, which is going to give me the Y position when the mouse was released. And both of those come from this guy right here, this event. And then we're going to go shapes, add our new shape to our array list of shapes so that we'll be able to grab them and cycle through them later on. And then we're also going to get the fill and that's going to be whatever the current value of fill color is. And we're going to get the current stroke that is set. Save that to the array list as well. You probably never thought array list could be so useful. And then we're going to just nullify draw start and draw end. And the reason why is because of a little test that we're going to do below here. And then after we're done with that, repaint the screen so that the images and shapes and all that stuff all show up real nice below. And then this guy right here is going to come up here and close that off. And you could come up here and do something. This would be a better way of doing this. You could say end of and then paste that in there so that you're able to track what's going on with the screen. And then directly after that, I'm going to go this, add mouse motion listener, and go new mouse motion adapter to track the movement of the mouse. And then we're going to define again exactly what we want to do with this guy. We're going to go public void mouse dragged mouse event E. And then we're going to get the final X and Y position, which it's going to be the final because at the end of the drag is whenever, whatever the position of X and Y is at that point in time, that's what value it's going to have. And then you go E, get Y, there you are, X and Y position, semicolon after that, and repaint the screen again. And then we'll put semicolon after there, and this wouldn't be needed, but if you wanted to, comment, paste that in there. Keep everything as neat as humanly possible. And then after this guy, we're going to go public, avoid paint, graphics. And this guy's going to handle setting up all the different rules for our drawing pad we have here on our screen. And this is going to define how the shapes are going to be drawn on the screen and rendering and all the other things I talked about in the last tutorial. And then we're going to handle the anti-aliasing. Graph settings is just going to be my graphic settings. I mean, I saved three letters and made it a lot less understandable. I probably should have called that graphic settings, but either way. So set, go down here, rendering hint. I like that. And then we're going to go rendering hints and just go key anti-aliasing. And like I said before, that just handles smoothing of the graphics on the screen. And then we're just going to copy this and pretty much type in the same thing here. And then this is going to be value anti-alias and it's going to be underscore on. Now we'll define some th information in regards to our stroke. So graph settings and set stroke. And I'm just going to define here with basic stroke, the line width for my stroke on the screen. So you see how easy it is to change the line width. You just would come in here and make a change to that right there. And then I'm going to create an iterator to cycle through my array lists for my strokes that are defined. Each one of those array lists is all going to line up. And I just need to go shape, stroke, and I call iterator right like that. Save that and copy. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for fill like that. And this is stroke counter. 
and fill counter. And then I just have changes to shape fill. And then later on, I'm going to do a really cool thing with transparency, but for right now, I want to make sure that my transparency is turned 100% off so that all the images that I paint on the screen are not transparent. See how easy it is if you'd want to go in and start doing transparencies? So there's a whole bunch of things I'm given here to play with. And whenever I set this to 1.0F, that means that it's going to have zero transparency to it. So if you want it to be different, well, you're going to see in a minute. And then I'm going to cycle through all my shapes that I created, so shapes. Then I'm gonna grab the next stroke color from my array list, so I just go graph, settings, set paint, equal to whatever the stroke is for the shape that was saved in the array list. They're all saved right next to each other, and next is gonna give me the next iteration that's inside of there, and then graph, settings, and I'm gonna go draw the shape on the screen using that new definition for the stroke, and then I'm gonna copy this. Paste that in there. And here I'm going to set paint again, but I'm going to use the fill counter right like that. Leave it as next. Again, it's going to cycle through all those things. And I'm going to change this to fill. So one handles the stroke, one handles the fills. And then this guy's going to come to a close. And then I'm going to define my guide shape. And this is basically going to be what is on the screen as I'm drawing the shape so that I can use it as a guide. You'll see here at the end, it's like light gray so that I can see what the rectangle looks like on the screen as I'm drawing it. So what do I want to do? I want to take my transparency. Remember I said I want to make it have a transparent so that it looks kind of professional on the screen as I'm drawing it. And let's just knock this way down. Let's go 0.4. Okay, so there that is graph settings and just set my paint as a gray. All right, then it's going to draw a rectangle on the screen. Some of this code is going to change in the next part of this tutorial. So I'm going to go shape a shape is equal to draw a rectangle and it's going to be draw start the xy position, draw start the y position, draw end the x position and draw end the y position. Then I have to create the draw rectangle method down below. Close that off. Let's just copy this guy right here. And then I'm going to go private. And this is going to return a rectangle 2d.float. Paste draw rectangle in there. And then it's going to get past those x, y positions you just saw. And then I'm going to figure out which x and y position are closest to the upper left hand corner. Because when you draw this rectangle, we want to figure that out. And the upper left hand corner of the string is 0, 0 in x, y terms. So to figure that out, I'm going to go int x is equal to and call math, and it's going to kick back the minimum value, which is going to be the one that's closest to the upper left-hand corner, so that I know how to draw that rectangle. Then I'm going to do the same thing here for the Y. This is going to be Y, and this is going to be Y, and this is going to be Y, of course. So there you go. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I just have to figure out the difference between the coordinates so that I know how wide my rectangle is. And I'm just going to go absolute value and get X1 minus x2, and then we're going to do the same thing for y, except this is going to be height, and this is y1 and y2. And then after that's done, i got to return my new rectangle that I just created here, which is going to be this guy right here, x, y, with height. File save it, and there you go. There is our little application. So go ahead, get the code, play with it, and learn this stuff. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to add even more features. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.